The class is called Vertical Neuroscience, How the Brain Enables Climbing. And it is a neuroscience class that teaches motor systems, motor learning, fear, and pain circuitry through the lens of rock climbing. So we have class uh, two days a week in the classroom and one day a week in the gym. So Dan and I are both climbers and we're both neuroscientists. And we really wanted to teach a summer class that kind of united our two passions. So all of the things that we want people to think about in motor neuroscience, like the connections between the brain and the muscles, and the way that fear and pain and different experiences change um, how those things work, those are all related to rock climbing in some way. One of the big parts of the class that we spent a lot of time on was thinking through how does the motor cortex, which is a, a part of your brain, how does it connect to the muscles? And how does your brain learn to control the right sequence of muscles? So the example that we used over and over was um, belaying. So when you're belaying, you're controlling the rope for somebody else who's climbing. And what's nice about belaying is that most of the students who came in had never belayed before. Well, the first time you're learning how to belay, it's this really awkward movement that you have to pull in the rope and pull it out of your harness at the same time and then pull it down. It's kind of this coordinated series of movements that feels very awkward. It takes a little while to get the hang of. So it was a skill that they had to learn over the last six, seven weeks and that they're still developing. And so what we were able to do was start in week three when we taught them to belay, taking videos of their belaying. One of the sort of classic things that happens when you're learning a new skill, your movements become more, more sort of consistent over time. So there's less variability in where you move your hands. We're using Deep Lab Cut, which is this open source software program um, that a lot of neuroscience researchers use. And it allows you to take a video, and track different points on the image so you can label like your, your fingers, your hand, your wrist, elbow, arm, etc. In each frame, you can kind of track the, the motion and the trajectory of those points that you've identified. So we, we collected that data early on and then we collected data about that again at the end of the class. And the idea is to show the students that skill learning is you know, real. It's just another example of something in motor neuroscience happening to the students in real time. I'm doing the one year master program in learning design technology. Definitely this is a great example of you learn something from class, how do you transfer that knowledge into other things that you do actually apply things you know to real life. So I think that's the main takeaway is sort of as an educator I feel in the future I would encourage students or learners to actually apply what they learn. It's a really great way to get people interested and passionate about science in their everyday lives and like connect it to something very real, connect it to their interests, connect it to like activities and fun hobbies. For more, please visit us at stanford.edu.